to the future with a potion red and white. A light bulb within my dreams, eliminated night. I looked and searched to understand where I sat and why. The answer was clear, the one I would hurt, how it would make us cry. But the wizard is smart, his magic is brief. He left me in pain with his clock at my feet. the volume and introduce you. This is my guest, Leah Klein. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so cool to have you here, my friend. Thank you. Yes, I'm just doing my my little things because you know it just depends on when i do them you know mm. <laughs> sometimes i do them now and sometimes i do them earlier and sometimes i do them later kind of depends okay but i am here and i gotcha I'm here too multitasking as well so <laughs> if i understand people can tune in on facebook and on youtube at the same time yes and some people don't really use Facebook, so. Exactly. So very clever of you to uh, <laughs> to be, you know, there are people on Instagram like Facebook. That's for older. <laughs> I know. Actually, sometimes I get people from LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. You know, I went on LinkedIn like about 20 years ago. I couldn't understand it. So I just like left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew it would be so amazing? <laughs> I'm I'm not a big fan of Instagram. I mean, I think because things go away so quickly, you know, it's like it comes up and then it's gone. Um, uh, but yeah. it, I guess it's good for uh, promotion. You know, I hire somebody to do most of most of it on Instagram. Then occasionally I'll I'll put something out when I remember. But it's uh, it's not my favorite platform. Yeah, it's a different uh, age group, actually. So what I about realize. TikTok? Huh? TikTok, you know TikTok? Oh my God, I've heard of TikTok and I've seen TikTok, but uh, <laughs> that's even that's even younger. <laughs> I think so. Probably identify with me, and then, <laughs> but they've got a lot of dance videos on TikTok. TikTok is really popular for like the thirty second. Yeah, I must say I'm a di totally addicted to when I'm feeling gray. There's this, this, this video guy. I think he's in LA because I recognize a lot of the background. And he, they, there's like a couple of hip hoppers or a girl and a guy, and they're just doing a like awesome choreography. Um, wow. And then it's just, <laughs> it just makes me happy. It's like, especially during lockdown. Is this on TikTok or somewhere yeah. else? It's on TikTok and then they post it on Instagram afterwards. So that's how I get to see it. So. <laughs> I discovered I'm I am a uh, a bad responsive buyer if I go on Instagram. Buyer. I buy things. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll buy that. <laughs> wow. Like, not good because I don't want to buy stuff so much and Not also anymore. a lot of them are come up from out of the country and either don't come or come I'm like six weeks later the, oh i live now in amsterdam right and and the uh, mail system has gone private and then so the the postal service is horrible oh so about mailing when you mail albums out or cds and stuff like that it's just sort of like yeah so private is private like is FedEx considered like private? Well, FedEx is private, yeah. For, whereas the postal service in the U.S. is still government run. Right. <clears throat> so private is bad. Well, in this instance, let's just say um, 
let's just say I got a postcard from a man who was one of my sponsors. He died five years ago and I received the oh postcard God. this year. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's kind of bad. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> wow. So well, you have to get something back from the postal service. You know, let's say you send something and it doesn't get to the right address. Um, you can pretty much wait. Don't change your address. <laughs> 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 address, mailbox open <laughs> the joys of living you know well, yeah it's just it's <laughs> somewhere funny. else yeah yeah so yeah. Uh, private i'm gonna change because I, I keep don't you guys hate that you just keep looking at yourself i'm gonna make you big so i don't have to look at myself <laughs> yeah I, li I like even good now <laughs> Yeah, talk to you. No. <laughs> I don't like me filling the picture. I like even, you know, anyway. You guys can look at me. I'll look at Kathy. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, my friend Joyce Glasgow is here. She's from Seattle. She said your singing is lovely. And Mark Baldridge says hello. And Nalini, hi Nalini. She wants to know is concert footage in the Netherlands because she was born in The Hague but she came to Hollywood when she was a baby. Well, it was actually, this is concert footage from a tour I did in Bulgaria. Mm. So in the summertime, um, there's some really beautiful, it was a uh, particular concert was in the Lozenets, if I say it properly, Lozenets on the water it was really great. And they were so professional and wonderful. And um, I knew the, pianist, Dimitar Boudourouf. He actually does a lot of work with Claire McFadden. Do you know Claire McFadden, the opera-based singer? Oh, yeah. In California has moved out here and they, he was doing, anyway, so he had organized a tour and they were celebrating America. One time as a white woman that I got a gig representing the United States in the jazz. <laughs> you how many times I've lost out because one of my lovely African-American friends got the job because it's very hard to convince people that jazz is for all colors. <laughs> That's true. You know, I, um, I played in, uh, I went, I had this gig many years ago. It was probably like a, a little over 20 years ago and in uh, Austria. And um, it was right around the time during the war. It was really an interesting life experience. But anyway, <laughs> I got there and my bags were lost. So I, I actually had to wear a dress that the singer before had left. And she was like two or 300 pounds. Wow. So <clears throat> I had to wear this dress and like belt it up. Anyway, I get to... I didn't have any time to practice with the band or meet the band because I it was late, you know, everything was late. So I I get there. Wonders of being on tour. <laughs> yeah. I get backstage <clears throat> and I walk in and the band says, Who are you? And I said, I'm Kathy Siegel Garth see And they said, You're not black. And I said, That is correct. Thank I'm you. not black. Thank and um, so they had an attitude. And then, of course, when I got out in front and I counted off the first song, up tempo, <laughs> and, and they they went, oh, oh, okay, okay, great, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was interesting. I mean, whatever. <laughs> it's so funny because over here, um, life has been really good for me over here. But then, as part of the uh, the joys of the struggles of dealing with. Uh, pigeonholing I guess um you know I'm like as an American I must be really good at marketing myself <laughs> wow and, and uh and uh as a white woman I don't have any rhythm huh. and it's funny to you know 
to just come across these things, you're like, oh, this is what it feels like. (laughs) Okay, okay, relax. (laughs) Yeah, it's interesting, very interesting. And And as a woman also, you know, like these moments where you have to sort of like, I don't know about you, but like if the band is kind of not with me, I can't feel free. So I kind of have to, if it's a pickup band, I kind of have to convince them a little bit about like to be with me. So it's really important for me to be nice with them that they feel also kind of, but you don't, you're the leading the band. So you also don't want to over here. Sometimes that they'll, they'll pretend that you're being nice means you don't know what you're doing. And so then they'll like suggest stuff to you. I don't want to, you want to do it at that tempo. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it's interesting. You you know, or the funny thing is that like um when you when you go like this or like this, yes calling out the uh the key. And they're like, oh (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I have my first uh One of my first big scatting uh, episodes was in Dutch. A, the key of A, um, key of, you know, the letter E and A sound opposite to each other. So I I, I counted off a tune that was like the wrong key because I said uh, uh, A flat, which I meant like E flat, but then in Dutch, a flat so i was like woo i'm gonna scatter <laughs> right, right, right away like, wow that was so awesome i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm my fingers from now on you know when i'm calling keys <laughs> i was just talking yesterday with a bass player ryan mcgillicuddy and we were just saying you know if you don't if you don't have those kinds of experiences you what how are you going to grow how are you going to know how to handle that unless you actually experience that you know it's just you don't and so like students you know i feel bad nowadays for students because they didn't they don't really have a lot of what we had you know growing up and and uh experiencing (laughs) like horrifying experiences you know (laughs) what's the name of this and this is also horrible. Like I can't name drop anymore. I, I <laughs> can't think of the name of someone who I played with like five years ago. But when I was in LA, who's this trumpet player? Um, oh my God. Uh, white or black? White out in Toluca Lake. He played out at Toluca Lake a lot. Um, uh, really smart mouth. Uh, and he, well, anyway redhead i think hmm. anyway he's not alive anymore but he oh. taught me a lot when we would work together uh just watching him was great you know to to also to watch yeah yeah you you guys want to know who is she talking about jimmy johnny they're all jimmy johnny. uh i can't remember a redhead that died who played trumpet Wow, I don't, I really don't remember. Like old fashioned, brassy, ballsy attitude. Huh. Yeah. Older person? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he's passed away now. But uh, anyway, let's not waste. Wow. Time. We'll have to, we'll have to think of that and let each other know. Um, <laughs> anyway. well, uh, I saw Tamir over here, Tamir Hendelman. Oh, really? Cool. It was cool because uh, he 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 made my first demo when I was out in LA. So I had I've seen him a few times come out here, and we saw each other at North Sea Jazz a few times. Oh, cool! Jeff Hamilton a few times, and with uh, the Clayton Hamilton Orchestra, and then he came out a few times to do his own little uh, trio and did a, a pickup group in. Uh, cool. Yeah, so that's nice to see my colleague. Yeah, I'm going to see him play Sunday. Um, yeah. There's, um, you know, the 
Did you ever uh, go or sing at the LA Athletics Club with Dave Ross? So he's now, these days, he's been doing like a monthly jazz salon in the larger room across the hall. Okay. And um, last month he had really good Barbara Morrison with a big band that was really wonderful. And then Sunday, <laughs> Tamir and his wife, you know, Sherry, the bass player, are playing and, and Tierney's singing. Tierney! Yeah, hey, so from the fun. From the blues, well, the jazz caravan, do you remember? Do you remember when there was the jazz caravan? Yes. All the clubs were participating and you'd get a bus to go from spot to spot. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that's where I got my start in that um, Italian place on... Um, Michelli's? Michelli's. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. That was, that was actually one of the fun hangs, Michelli's. And yeah. I mean, because Michelli himself, Carmen, he was a character. He was kind of a Vegasy jazz guy, you know. Mm. He had this amazing, amazing house, like an Italian villa behind Ca del Sol in that really? area. And yeah. uh, his wife was super, you know, patient. I, mean, I guess like, you know, kind of the typical older Italian wife or something. Because <laughs> he was, <laughs> he was, he was rowdy, man. He would crawl over the fence between his house and Cadel Sol, and he had Michelli's, both Michelli's. And then, you know, he's always hanging out. And one time he told me, um, <clears throat> there will never be another you. I was singing it swing, like most people do. He, he said, come here. <laughs> and he yeah. said, yeah, he said, that song is a ballad. It was written as a ballad for World War II veterans. And then I thought about it and I was like, oh, yeah okay i can see that you know um there's someone new another song another thing mm -hmm. there will never be another yeah so to 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 sing to their sweethearts or something yeah hmm. there will never be lips that i may kiss your there will there will be other lips that I make and they won't thrill me like yours used to do yet. yeah so don't worry honey I'm coming home yeah something like <laughs> and it's okay if I fool around but uh, you know you <laughs> Nalini's asking uh if either one of us are planning something special for March 8th, which is International Women's Day. You know, Nalini, I didn't notice that. I booked, and on this show, I booked a male drummer. Terrible. I'm going to look at <laughs> my agenda and see what I'm doing. On it's a Tuesday. A terrific Tuesday. Well, maybe I'll do something online. Or maybe, maybe you and I should both do something online. <laughs> yeah, why not? Here we are. Every day is a woman's day for us. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, what, no, when no, did no. you actually move? I moved at the turn of the century. Oh. <laughs> so. Um, wow. Yeah, I moved around the end of 1999. And why did you move? I did. Um, and did you move directly to Amsterdam? Yeah, I did. I um, I did winters. I start. I did my own. I started a jazz cabaret thing at the Gardenia, oh. and I made like three or four different shows. And I took them onto a cruise ship to sort of winter away, December and January. So I would go for four years in a row. I went for five weeks to on a cruise ship, and I had my own act. Hmm. And so um, I, one of the ships I went on was a Dutch, a Holland America cruise line. So I had made some friends and I was playing on sunset names, names, names. And there was this gentleman who was always uh, there and he kept coming back and forth from Europe. And I was like, what? what is this thing with Europe and how do you go over to Europe? 
And he said, well, you actually over there, you just have to meet people. You have to go over there and meet people. So I was like, oh, in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, I love Europe. I, I went over there for also um, a USO tour. Uh, so I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll just go over there. And um, a friend of mine came out to LA and then um, I said, you know, I'm going to do like what I did in Cal to come to California, what I would do. And I'll go to Amsterdam because I give it a year and see what happens. <laughs> if I don't like it, you know, I'll just come back. And um, essentially, I just went to auditions and I uh, actually got into a musical about Irving Berlin. I was like, I know about Irving Berlin. I can sing all the harmonies and, and it was about his life with all the, and the songs were in English, but the text was in Dutch. And then I, I was in the show and I, and then I got one job after another. It was like only green light. So I just never came back. And I came back the first five or six years to do shows in LA. And then after a while, um, I just, uh, was spending my vacation money to come back to LA, you know? And so I was like, I, I wanna see Europe. So then I started to tour more around Europe. So, um, yeah. And then uh, things developed from there. I had my, own, and I took those cabaret, those cabaret shows, translated them into Dutch. And then I had my own theater show here for a while. Oh. And I started to make albums. So, my first album from, well, this Peel Me Grape was from that album, 2003. I came back to LA to make this album because uh, I needed it to sell at the, in the lobby during the, the, at the end of the show. So I had Jan, John Rangel and company um, record together this album. And, um, and then that was the beginning. I'm now nine albums later. For me, I was thinking, oh, I'd make seven, but I ended up making nine. So that's really cool. And uh, yeah, cool. So, yeah, I just stayed. I was still beginning when I was uh, with you. And one of those times I came to teach a workshop for you, I remember. Once I remember. I have a picture of it. You do? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Not right this second, but I could probably go find it. But um, uh, with, uh, learning Dutch is not so easy. So what I I don't even understand. Did you come up, go over, and you learned Dutch all of a sudden, or? Funny. Well, the thing is, is that I actually chose Amsterdam because it they already speak English. It's actually really difficult to speak Dutch because I thought, okay, you've got Paris. No, no, no. They. They won't listen to me until I can speak French properly. <laughs> and you've got Rome, same thing. And then I didn't have any connections in England. So in, in a way, it was sort of Amsterdam was like the, the best possible choice. And, and Amsterdam is a little bit like New York anyway, like a, a strange, beautiful, busy New York. And so I actually forced people to talk to me in Dutch. They, they are such a small country that they listen to you. And it, within two seconds, they know that you're not from here. And they have decided that you're German or Spanish or French or English. And then they just talk to you <laughs> and in Amsterdam. So um, people are impressed that I actually do speak Dutch. Yeah. La, la, la. <laughs> I'm impressed. I, I, I'm proud of myself. It is good for my brain. It's really, it's sort of, um, being a singer is really nice way to learn because I had to teach myself to say the, the vowels differently. You yeah. know, all singers, they also have to work really hard to sing in different languages. So I enjoyed that part. Um, I had a, an accent teacher because I did that musical. So part of the thing was they put me with this drama teacher to teach me like, ah, ah, ah. And which of course, you know, if you know how to sing and put the, put it here, then it becomes much easier. Like, um, let's see, the first thing I realized was um, the difference between put and boat. Irving <laughs> Berlin had put a, a sturdy foot in the ground, put. 
but if you say putz, then that means lesbian. So you have to be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> Irving, Irving Berlin, you know, he put a steady, sturdy lesbian in the ground <laughs> that I had to really like work on. <laughs> I don't know why, but it seems like when you speak it, it seems very natural to hear you speak it. Um, it what what's what is your heritage? Is your heritage German or yeah, not I, that not that that would necessarily matter, really? But I don't actually know, but I feel really comfortable here. Yeah, and uh, the spelling of my name is not the German spelling, which would be K L E I N. Mine is K L I N E. Yeah, and here, if you make an I J Klein, then it would be Dutch. So and the, so. Yeah, I can't say, but um, my my grandmother Klein was divorced really early, and she was too pissed off to research the Klein name, so she researched the, through the women. So I actually don't <laughs> I don't know much about. That. <laughs> what was her maiden name? Her name was Carrington. Oh, so kind of English or or Scottish yeah, or English royalty. Oh. Ooh. So my big joke is when people want to remember my name, I say, Leia, Princess Leia. You can just call me Princess <laughs> And, you know, uh, I don't remember that you, what did you say? It is a joke. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mark would like to know how record sales are in Europe. They suck. <laughs> there you go, Mark. It's the same I'm everywhere. Actually for, I, no, I opened a jazz club with a colleague of mine in the south of France in 2019. I was working like every night. It was so much fun. I was hosting when I wasn't singing and I sold albums there. But the people I sold albums to the most were British people. Hmm. So I'm thinking uh, I've got to do a little homework and um, find out who still actually owns a CD player. I had a friend of mine say the other day that um, actually the audio feels, the ones who are buying vinyl, they are going back to vinyl and CD when they buy a really good stereo uh, because the whole streaming thing is just killing. So over here, everything's digitalized uh, and and so... Yeah, even CD Baby, you and I were both um, are were members of this. Uh, um, that went really well to sell CDs through CD Baby until about four or five years ago when they just decided to empty. Yeah, them. and I don't even really get who they're selling to exactly. They are they're just selling streaming digital streaming deans for their musicians. Their but they're they're selling physical product too. But I don't get to who like to the small stores <laughs> or. Yeah stores yeah it's kind of yeah. weird yeah cd baby really took a left turn um mark gets paid for like being i don't know he said he gets paid from his music being played in the netherlands um, um he makes better world. money there than other countries oh yeah yeah the the horrible thing is that i have to constantly fill in you, you can get paid for playing live. You have to submit your playlists and stuff like that, which I still have to do for 2019. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I get paid for people playing my music and buying my music on um, Apple, Apple Music and Spotify like the rest of us. Zero point zero, whatever. And because the three albums have my own, uh, my own work on there so i get we of course get paid more for that yeah yeah you've been writing uh, too yeah and um i guess i'm more a lyricist than i am a composer because all my albums 
and maybe that's a godsend because I've learned to do so much stuff on my own. So in order to make music, I have to uh, work together with someone else. And so each album is completely different, has a different vibe and a different, and it's really nice. And I'm, I'm really digging this spoken word thing actually is kind of funny because all my albums, there's some spoken word piece on there. I, yeah, I listened to something. I really liked it. It was maybe on your site? Um, yeah, maybe. I've got like, um, I've got uh, on Joe's Flirtin, I've got this um, spoken word poem about more than matter. And then uh, on This Precious Life, I did a sort of thing about words. That, uh, I turn, uh, not where I see what that you're, who you are, not from what you say, but what you do kind of things. Is that on one of the links? I can't remember. Is that on one of the links you sent or is it on your site? Uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> on or your YouTube, channel. There's a YouTube channel with me on it, but um, none of the spoken words are, um, I did make a video of one of them. And, but I give them as gifts to people who buy albums. That's one thing I do do. I do do. I love do do. Do do do. I'm giving you, you a share. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Did I miss my cue? Was I supposed to say yes? Let's listen to that now. No, I'm giving. And by the way, I'm sending you the link for the YouTube channel where you can see it for your friend. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, well, yeah, I want to I'd like to show that I I thought it was on your site. Is it here? Here? Yeah. Um, not sure. Click on there. Click on there. Let's see what's on there. Um, I'm scrolling down, down, down. Mm, no, that's the one we started with. OK, oh. so I think it's on your link. I mean, your site. It could be. That's what I think. Yeah. Now you're making me look on my computer. <laughs> I, um, I actually wrote a song the other day. Well, I wrote the lyrics for something. That's more exciting than, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe once this is up, I'll include a link to the, I thought it'd be really funny to, to write a song about how I found found the man of my dreams. I was at the sauna the other day and uh, I think I might have met the man of my dreams, but things may not be as they seem. He's so sweet and polite, uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it turns out to be the waiter. <laughs> um, it's a, is one of these them? <laughs> no, I actually written it. It's like a new thing. Um, let, if you give me a moment and ask me something else, I will look Oh, those, yeah. Um, the three, these are music videos that I made myself that I edited on the left side. One of them is the new technology blues. And then but I'm, I want to hear your um, spoken word. Yeah, well, what I can do is screen share something from my computer. All right, then. But, um, now I have to look for it. La. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm so I'm so unorganized. Tone, oh yeah, I, call, oh. I love Kurt Elling. I I called it a tone poem. All right, so I can share this with you. <clears throat> How do I do that? Can I share? At the bottom, it says share screen and share the the use the uh, sound as well when you go in there right. you have a choice to check off a box that says yeah, share um, sound with, i'll include the subtitles um now i have to i wrote because of the amazing experience when you meet somebody and it clicks can you guys see it yeah more 
Nothing matters more than the matter of being. Of the synergy. Of the sound is not very good, Leah. Yeah, I don't know how to stop this. Yeah, this is not, it's not really happening. Um, so, anyway, if you, so that's, uh... but um, on your site, there was like a promo. Uh, it might have been under music projects. Oh, yeah. uh, but it was, it was, um, I don't know what, but I watched it and it was, there was a really nice video and there was spoken word on it too. So was it under the videos or do you know? I'm looking now. Uh, uh, let me, let me just try one of these. Right. I will try, hey you. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, new technology blues does have some speaking in it. So that's probably the one. Hey, I recognize your disguise. I am here. Let me whisper in your ear something that will bring you back. Something beautiful. Inspiring light and gay. Then you can go on your way. This video. Hey you, you there with your hand on your chin, staring at the sky. Boredom in your eyes, are you lost? At what cost? Are you waiting for life to pass you by? Or waiting for the thrill to kick in? Hey you, you there with your head hanging down, concerned with a friend. Staring at the ground, are you hiding? Been trying too hard to figure out what it's all about, or for someone to look you in the eye. Hey, I recognize your disguise. I am here. Let me whisper in your ear something that will bring you back. Something beautiful, inspiring, light and gay Then you can go on your way Or put it in your pocket, mm -mm. Hey you I'll trade you a whisper for a smile Trade your disguise for something wiser You lie for the truth, don't be lost At the cost of today my whispers on the way on the wind So open up your ears and let me whisper something in
Either with your hand on your chin, staring at the sky. With boredom in your eyes, are you lost? At what cost? Are you waiting for life to pass you by? Or waiting for the thrill to kick in? Hey, you. You there with your head hanging down, concerned with a frown, staring at the ground. Are you hiding? Then trying too hard to figure out what it's all about, or for someone to look you in the eye. Hey, I recognize your disguise. I am here. Let me whisper in your ear. Something that will bring you back. Something beautiful, inspiring, light and gay. Then you can go on your way. Put it in your pocket. Mm -mm. Hey you. I'll trade you a whisper for a smile. Trade your disguise for something wiser. Your life for the truth. Don't be lost. Cost up today. My whispers on the way on the wind. So open up your ears and let me whisper something in. Something like. Be oo ba ba do you didn't do. Be oo ba ba I didn't do. See oo ba ba do you didn't do. Be oo ba ba I didn't do. V oo va va do you didn't do. See oo ga ba. I didn't do she was I but who you didn't do be oopa bye I didn't do be oopa but be oopa but be oopa I do da ze oopa but ze oopa but ze oopa I do da but do you didn't do but do you didn't do do ba go on day to watch your own stuff so funny. <laughs> that's cool very cool <laughs> cool and corny like what did you say corny cool and corny oh cool and corny i think it's cool um that's your song right yep that was my song and that was like at the time i, I was uh, writing every morning i would go every morning to actually the coffee shop so i was actually writing about somebody who was there. This is why I filmed it at a cafe in Amsterdam. So that it was actually, there were a, a lot of people there just sitting there staring out the window and I just sort of wrote a, <laughs> tell me, I'm like, come on everybody. <laughs> so in a way, that was like my, uh, my Oda on, uh, on, on people who seemed like a little bit down and you know uh Sina e the danish singer she's she's funny she'll she'll say you know stuff like this is a song that i wrote about danish depression <laughs> it's real yeah. <laughs> not like you don't think about it when the sun, yeah when the sun is like not available yeah you have to figure out where you're gonna get some energy from like it, it, I came from LA. I was living in LA for seven years and, and I came to Holland. And then after the first year, I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. You know, <laughs> it, it just, it does have an effect on you. I was lighting candles and uh, going to the sauna and doing all sorts of things to uh, kind of keep your spirits up. Because when the sky, sky is cloudy, like all the time, the people in England understand that it's, uh, it can really, can affect you so so therefore the red wall 
Exactly, ladies and gentlemen. This is not red. It's vermilion. My mother, oh. your decorator, would like you to know that it's not red. It is vermilion. <laughs> There's no blue in it. Thank you. <laughs> it's very it pretty. Happy. It's my happy one. I like the artwork as well. Thank you. Indonesia. Yeah, because Holland has a connection with Indonesia, so there's a lot of Indonesian influence here. I see. And something I didn't know about you, uh, I don't think, was your yoga involvement. You're quite involved with yoga. Well, especially now after the last two years. But um, I suppose I'm like a lot of musicians who needed a way to stay grounded. And as you could see from that last video, I, I'm a mover. So I needed something to do with myself that was healthy. So personally, I just did yoga a lot. And uh, I was also trained in dance. So at a certain point, someone asked me to teach a yoga class. And um, that was really easy for me to do because body and voice are all kind of connected with me. and. Then, um, yeah, I was kind of teaching yoga like once or twice a week as a community service. Does that make sense? And, and there was this yoga studio. There was also a, a concert area and I was doing concerts. And then I started to, um, when I brought my album out in 2014, I organized lay down concerts. And <laughs> I, I did like, um, at the end of a yoga class, people lay down and meditate. And I would sing to them at the end of the class and everyone would be like, wow, I felt it through my whole body. <laughs> and I was at a rehearsal with a piano player from the, the number that we just heard, Derek Balthouse. And he had this fantastic grand piano. So after a while, all my musician friends knew that when I wanted to relax, it wasn't in a chair. I would literally lay down on the floor. <laughs> So while I took a little rest moment on the floor, my friend was like, yeah, I'm working on this classical piece. And I laid on the floor and I felt all the music go through my whole body. I thought, wow. So then I started to incorporate music into yoga and I started to teach yoga. And I started to teach yoga teachers about using their voice and as like a teaching instrument. And yeah, I'm kind of passionate about both of them. I think yoga helped me stay calm on stage because I have a lot of energy. And so it taught me to actually be like this. Instead of like this, I was always <laughs> like this, trying to put myself over the top because that's what I thought I had to be. And now I can just be calm and in my body and singing from here. And and then um, of course I, I, I can teach 50 people at the same, I teach 50 people yoga or that's what I was doing. So that was really easy because I am not afraid to be on stage. So that was a beautiful kind of combination. Oh, pretty cool. Yeah. So, and, and you were trained as a dancer as well? Yeah, I, I, um, I was trained to sing and dance. I got more of my training privately with singing. But with dancing, I had gone to a conservatory. I was going to go to Juilliard, but oh. I'm afraid of New York. That's why I moved out to California. I was really afraid of New York. Kind of lived a bit. Where did you Where did you come from? Maryland. Okay. Maryland. Maryland. Make sure everyone in Maryland knows I'm still from Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> um, yeah, I grew up in. Um, I was born in Japan on a military air force oh. base. But I grew up in Maryland, and then. Yeah, I went to North Carolina School of the Arts. Oh. And then I came back and I moved out to California to seek my future. And that led to tours. And yeah, New York and LA were where all the things that left the country were auditions and stuff like that. And so that's, that's sort of how I got traveling. And um yeah, and I, I like, I, you know, I, I thank God for yoga because, um, you know, singing was the most contagious part of the COVID, right? So, and over here, 
they they just it's it's really difficult to i had so many concerts scheduled in 2020 and 2021 and everything got canceled you know so we would lead in lockdown and then out of lockdown and everyone would hustle and get a gig and then it would be canceled so yeah, yeah. but i did do i did singing telegrams last year i decided to um oh wow you know everyone has one of these yes. so i actually on my iphone um made a singing telegram for somebody so i'd be like hey kathy 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 you don't know me but someone has sent me a does uh, you have a secret admirer and this song's for you you know and then i'd send it to their iphone so they'd get like this message <laughs> like oh my god you know <laughs> that was my one creative that's uh, a great idea it was really fun yeah yeah it wasn't cost effective but i really enjoyed doing it you know <laughs> and um and you would um, be that person who could show up somewhere too like and do it <laughs> do a whole da, 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 da. <laughs> because that's sort of how i come across but actually i am i'm a little bit shy with people i don't know i've got a friend who just go nuts on the street and so like doing the videos was sort of like a controlled atmosphere so i i could uh really just be that's so funny you know i can't tell you how many people on this show have told me they're in in uh, what is it called in Ex yeah and, and i'm just like I, I don't it's interesting i and i think i've heard it well i mean i have you know i've been doing these interviews every day for several years now and but it's the most I've ever heard people talk about that. And I, I find it fascinating that people think of themselves as introverts. And I, I just wonder, does that mean shy? Does it mean, what, what does that mean to people? I'm not really sure. I never pu push it too hard because- I don't Oh, I'm happy to, to talk rude. about it. <laughs> okay. oh. Technically. But, you don't consider yourself an introvert though, right? No, I'm the most, I did one of those tests, right? How yeah. many of you have not done this test? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm the most uh, extrovert of the introverts. Like I'm the mediator. So I get power and, and energy from people who need something. So when I see there's a need for something, I will rise to the occasion. And then I'm, I'm doing it not just for me, but for other people. And I'm there to sort of, communicate or make something clear uh -huh. um and but afterwards i need to exit the situation and i have to go back to my little because it's exhausting so performing is like great but i always like i can never go to festivals as a as a as a public i i have to be on stage and i have to know that i'm going to be leaving and where i'm going and i can put myself there and talk to the audience but i'm always like wondering where where am i going to have my break you know because um it's just uh i get really tired so extroverts get energy from being around people oh. and introverts get energy from being alone and quiet and if i'm honest and it it's so funny because all my all my work is out there with other people so it's very funny when people actually i've i've had many boyfriends in the past who who kind of became um let's say got to know me as a singer and then when they got to know me they're like what's wrong with you <laughs> like i'm at home <laughs> can we just be quiet you know so it's kind of funny <laughs> interesting that's really interesting yeah like if i have a role uh -huh. i I'm, I'm good if i'm if it's clear like what i'm there there's i think for me there's a need for something like um and so if people really want me to do something i'll do it but extroverts they'll just break into song whether or not you want to hear it <laughs> i am more like well, if you really, really, really want me to, I will, you know, like that. Or I'll just do something little. They're usually like, um, I'll be singing in the back of a car 
and that'll be like a big deal for me to just like just sing out loud and then usually it reminds people that the radio wasn't on and then after one tune instead of them saying oh great more then they'll be like oh yeah they'll turn the radio on <laughs> i'll just be like oh no <laughs> wow one one could take that personally yeah well i, I know that uh, sometimes people <laughs> wow i feel that if you feel yeah and that's creativity too for me because as a singer like I sing and it fills the silence. So if there's noise around me, the creative thing doesn't happen because there's all this um, stimulus. So to be alone and to be quiet really allows me to, that's, that's when I start to make up melodies and rhymes and words. So in, in many ways, the creative spirit is coming from inside, from being, uh, I guess, a little bit shy or introvert. Yeah, funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so actually, my this is, a, is actually um, a coping mechanism. This show or this? This. this. Oh. Me. okay this. yeah me. yeah let's make a joke let's uh right. <laughs> and and so so it's I, I learned that over the years you know uh so that's the product of, so there you go a little insight into introversion i think now, when i was younger i did a lot of that you know uh like in college age you know um i don't i don't know I'd have to think about that when it, when and if it changed. I think it has changed. Sometimes I notice I'm very quiet and observant in a situation that other people are very active. Mm -hmm. And um, I wonder why I'm quiet and observant. You know, like, um, do I have nothing to say or am I very spiritual? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. what you know what is it <laughs> um but yeah you're um, interested in other people that's for i'm sure. definitely interested in other people yeah i i do like to hear i like to hear what people have to say you know and um it's inspirational and it's in, it's just interesting you know um so i do like that i like that a lot and also i've always liked things like you know i remember I read somewhere, I think, that rich people, or I don't know, I don't know if all, it's not all rich people, but like maybe it was this one guy who I knew who was rich. They listen, or no, they don't just listen, they ask the person about themselves. They don't talk about themselves, they ask the other person. And that's maybe part of the reason they got rich you know, because they're listening and they got smart. I just always thought that was really intriguing. Yeah. I, I was just thinking, actually, people make me nervous, to be honest. Like, I, I, I think that I get like, whoa, because people make me nervous. I'm like, what, what is it that I'm supposed to do here? <laughs> and, and I'm really good with one-on-one -on -one things, but when I get in a group, it's sort of like, um i do something i'm really great if i'm the host or i'm the performer then it's really obvious what i have to do so um and then also actually asking people questions is an easy way to sort of find your role let's just talk about you let's that's so, i yeah. do that when i'm teaching a class and i suggest that to to clinicians who come here like mm -hmm ask everybody what they're here for first and then you'll know what you're supposed to talk about you know although some people come in with their own agendas but yeah it's I always agree. great to do that i had to discover that because i was always thinking oh i have to show up and and show something of myself and actually um people want to experience their own creativity yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I remember like even when people ask a question, it took me a year or two to realize when well, I was like teaching more. I don't. I 
of course I have the answer. Otherwise I wouldn't be teaching this class. So I'm going to ask the group, well, what do you guys think? Because then people think instead of just watching you uh, spew out all your knowledge and, and information. So yeah, it becomes personal to them. And it's, and, and it's intuitive, which is something that I learned to trust that I can just show up pay attention to what's going on and i will respond appropriately and it'll be okay yeah. so that's really that's really nice especially on stage yeah that i have I, to tell you something um so stephen nakmanovich is a friend of mine he wrote the book free play improvisation and life in the arts yeah and he also wrote a second book too called the art of is but um so I brought him to LA to do some workshops and uh, we went up to Idlewild and um, it was an, it was a multi, um, what's that word? Multi, oh, the word has gone out of my head. It was everybody in the school. I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh, definitely not. But it was uh, everybody in the school, you know, huh? Multi-purpose? Multiple. No, that's that's a simple way of saying it, but there's a term for a school and it's all departments, multi, I can't remember. But anyway, so it was, I mean, it's, a, it's an arts school, but it was all the different departments, you know, Multi multidiscipline, I think that is it. <laughs> you win <laughs> a prize. So dance and guitar and, you know, whatever. So, and we were in an auditorium on the stage. And everybody, all the kids were on the stage who were joining. And so his his thing is improvisation, right? <clears throat> Which everybody knows. And um, so he comes out and this this is what he does. He comes out like this. That's it. He doesn't say anything. And I'm I'm starting to feel uncomfortable because I'm like, oh my God. What, when, he needs when, to say something, you know, and yeah, they're not going to do anything. And wouldn't you know, in a few minutes, somebody started playing guitar and then, and these kids had never intermingled with each other, you know, from the department to department. And then all of a sudden a dancer started dancing and then a singer started singing. And before you knew it, it was this beautiful improvisational piece with all the kids and he wow. didn't say a word <laughs> wow he just stood there and his presence and awareness was enough you know to be uh i guess kind of an answer or a witness or a director well, in, yoga, in yoga we call that holding space so like you're standing there and you're holding space for something to blossom or something to happen and you totally trusting the process and and actually that's that's quite a place to get to because you, yes. you can say i'm holding space but inside you're like holy shit holy shit <laughs> no no wait wait and just keep no i mean you just literally hold space you see everything as beautiful and complete and and in with improvisation sometimes that's actually how you can most get out of your way is just to realize that you're only a half note from worst case scenario you're a half note off of some amazing thing you're really close so just go for it and stay listening you know well the beauty is if you do hold that space consistently yeah refocusing if you need to then anything that really comes out is in is in that space and there there are no mistakes there's not even a half note difference because there, there's nothing it's a, it's all a possibility yeah. right yeah but uh yeah that space is challenging to get to and tomes have been written about it i'm actually reading a um the next book after Effortless Mastery of Kenny Werner's. Yeah. He, he also you. wrote a book, just like Stephen Nachmanovich, they waited about 25 years. And um, yeah, so um, 
Well, at a certain yeah. point, you know, you have to free yourself from yourself in your brain. And it's a really difficult task because at some point when you're growing up, all the, all the directives were there and were helpful to, to, to allow you to do some stuff, but then you grow up or you leave your family situation and you're still holding on to the same methods. And then they start to eat away at, at your brain, eat away at your creativity. And, you know, and then I don't know about you, how many times has somebody tried to help you and ask you what's your five-year plan, you know? And then if you're really <laughs> someone who holds space to have life happen to you and let life lead, and that you're just honoring the gifts you're, you've been given and do the best with you, can, you know, then the five-year plan is kind of a ridiculous question. Like, <laughs> Shut up. That's mother. true. I'm over here trying to uh, <laughs> create life lead me. And so would you just please like back off with your business, <laughs> business plan? How much does it cost you when you ask me what my five-year plan is? Stuff like that is really difficult to step over. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, I find it really, really beautiful. And um, so I'm really grateful for all of those books, even if like you take it off the shelf to remind yourself for two seconds and it, it worked for an hour before you went back and then you take it off again. I find, you know, like I read the um, Herbie Hancock book that was so awesome to to hear his experience also about meditating and uh committing to so much new stuff and uh then you're like yeah i'm allowed to just be unfolding as i am i don't have to put myself into a corner and um categorize myself so that other people can figure out what to do with me <laughs> you know what I mean that's the trick yeah tricky. or you, you have to do that to sell some stuff but then don't start believing it because I don't know about you but I can't be singing the same tunes for 20 years I you know I have to keep honoring what I'm feeling and, and what I'm going through so that's why every album I made is like slightly different and people like so you're not, you did a blues album, but you're not a blues singer. You did a, a traditional jazz, you know, and you're not a fish. Who are you then? I'm me. <laughs> I'm an artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I even have, let's see, I have uh, something from someone, um, Dan, he gave me uh, you teaching mantras. Marcy Castro, hi, you're welcome. Uh, then you in Shipper <laughs> something in 2003. Catherine Cox, she said hi from your LA trio, looking lovely as ever. Thank you. Interdisciplinary. Wow. Thank you. Talk about Irving Berlin. Catherine Cox, that was great. Yeah. And uh, Robin Cornbith Snyder, great to see you, Leah. Hello from New York. Hello. <laughs> nice yeah talking about funny like i i love yoga but i'm not the kind of person who wants to sing kirtans and mantras with uh a harmonium have you ever you know what a harmonium is yeah that thing takes up all the vibrations of a singer it just occupies the space so i actually prefer to sing a cappella. uh-huh into a space well uh i'm gonna look at this because i'm curious what are you looking at leah Hello. klein and i am going to share with you some ideas about oh, mantras yeah. mantras are essentially a replacement of all the other things that you're always saying to yourself which in general are pretty negative <laughs> uh, mantras are a way to shift your vibration i know this african tune that has a wonderful melody and we can just shift the message to I am being okay with everything that is. And as you sing this with me, just allow yourself to let go of all the things of the mind and just be present to your inner light. Yeah. Close your eyes. 
And if you'd like to join me, you can also start with your hands in a prayer position. And I'll sing it once and you can join me once you hear it. Am I am I am I am I am I am I am Keep that, I can sing a harmony over top. Yeah. <laughs> am I 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 am Alright, so now we can we can actually sing with you. You know what? It's funny. I um I started doing something in the last few years called prayer improv. And um I'll put it up on Instagram or whatever, sometimes Facebook, but I'll just whatever wherever I am, outside or inside or whatever, and I start improvising and I just call it prayer impro improv and it usually lasts I don't know, a minute or two minutes. Mm -hmm. And it feels, you know, definitely feels like there's an ending. And I just like doing it because, um, well, I think a lot of what's been online over these last few years has been um, a different point of view of perfection. You know, it's like, hey, this is reality. You know, let's let's do this. It feels mm -hmm. good. It's healing. Uh, you know, I'm sharing with you. Yeah, I'm in my pajamas, but it's cool. <laughs> I know some people don't like it, but I think I think being in your pajamas is fine. You know, it's like I to do that. I just that would be great because I, I do it a lot. Yeah, not inspiring. I, I'd like to do that because I just like to sing a cappella because of the a room or a hallway or I find acoustics really amazing, and a yeah. lot of times. I'll just break into uh, this Kurt Elling tune. Well, that's a regular tune, but you know the, the one he goes, uh, understand the night as she flashes her sparkling eyes at dusk. She flirts with twilight. It's from this um, solo from Moonlight Serenade. And I'll just break into song because of the acoustics to test out. And then sometimes I'll make up my own tune. I should join you with the prayer. Yeah, we have to figure out something to do. Uh, which uh, somebody wants to know the name of the Herbie Hancock book. It's called Herbie Hancock, I believe. It's actually a white book. I It was his autobiography, I believe. Lovely book. Also because he he went into total electronic improv from traditional jazz and that around that time he was doing transcendental meditation. Let's see who's the other. Um, oh wait, the trumpet player that I was trying to, Jack. Jack, wasn't yeah. Jack Sheldon, Jack. Yes, it was Jack Sheldon. Oh, yeah, Jack I'm not sure Jack died. Did he oh. die? <laughs> Well, he might have died in the last few years or yeah. not. I can't remember. But anyway. anyway, it was Jack Sheldon. I learned so much from him. Does he fit my earlier description? I can't he, remember. He I met him but he, a whiskey bottle. So he's he I was talking about him the other day with somebody on here, um, an old, probably an older musician, maybe Henry Franklin or something. But um 
Yeah, Jack Sheldon was really cool. I sang great, played trumpet great, um, played. He and Ross Tompkins would make these duo records like they'd go in for an hour, shake it out of their thing, and then just and then that was it. Yeah. yeah, he was. I really liked him. I liked him a lot, and I loved his singing. Actually, he was. I think really he was also good. also an introvert, if I may. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, that's hard to imagine. Yeah, yeah because an with. Well, anyway, well, then maybe you think a lot of um, maybe you think a lot of comedians are introverts. Could be, yeah. Anyway, going back to who meditates. Or going back to Herbie Hancock, uh, Possibilities, <laughs> is it called? Um, like I said, she's gonna have one to go of the reasons why I'm not a superstar is I do not know how to name drop and remember details. Um, that will really keep you from being a superstar. Yeah, you know, like, oh, I was just with her. <laughs> I mean, that, that's uh, her. her, her. <laughs> All I remember is it's a white, it's a white book. I, it, it came out uh, already a long like time ago, five, five seven, five, more than five years ago. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Victor, uh, what's his name? The bass player. He wrote a great book too, yeah. um, which I cannot remember. And it's somewhere in my, in my house. I have, I don't know about you, but I have like piles of books by the bed. I'm reading yeah. Kenny Werner's book. I'm reading a book by, um by chief seattle oh really a really beautiful beautiful indian spiritual book um mm -hmm. i just got uh gosh the frailty of failure something about failure which is was highly recommended i got uh howard mandel who's the writer howard mandel's jazz book so all, all of those books are sitting there, plus uh, Victor Frankel's book on the meaning of life, which and he was a he was a prisoner in a war camp, and it's not a depressing book. It's really interesting. It it okay. talks about what happened, but it's it's with a slant of what the meaning of life is and how how do you continue living your life no matter what you know and yeah. you know and bring bring joy and bring understanding and you know it's really interesting so those are some of the books by my bed <laughs> nice and i was reading this um book about the art of possibility mm. from a, a gentleman who was <clears throat> conducting for the massachusetts uh youth orchestra or something and and just uh so i think actually everybody needs these kind of books but they just no one wants to talk about spirituality or mindset well they call it mindset you know but it's actually um calming yourself down and like listening to your inner pulse is kind of the best way to create i've just started teaching at the conservatory here and a lot of it's really about breathing and listening and becoming aware. And when you can do that, then you can really start to, yeah, feel your own. I agree with you. You know, did you know that um, Kenny Werner uh, about seven years ago opened a department at Berkeley called Effortless Mastery? That's awesome. Isn't that because incredible? It should, it should be. I think we're making a, sh we should be making a shift Lots of SHs there. We should be making <laughs> in um, in the way we label each other and deal with each other. Yeah, I mean, it was like a big deal for me to add yoga to my website because yoga people love that I am singing, but musicians they they see yoga and they think that I have somehow changed careers or that I don't that I don't sing anymore. And I was like. Um, I sent you a list. John Coltrane, John McLaughlin, Don Cherry, Wayne Shorter, Yusuf Latif, Sony Rollins, and Herbie Hancock all were into yoga and meditation, not to mention Sting. So I don't know. And because you want to share it with people, everyone thinks all of a sudden you're not really a serious musician and not everyone, but some people. And it's 
when when we allow ourselves to open up and then we can stop um pigeonholing ourselves yeah other. i actually know a lot of people who are involved in various things but it might be again because i talked to so many people i've i mean you are number 393 Yay, 393. <laughs> but I, I think it's probably that, you know, it's probably that because I have an unrealistic point of view because I talk to people every single day. But um, but I really do feel that a lot of people I know are do other things. They have focuses on other things and they they realize how important they take they take things into consideration and of course i'm attracted you know to people who are more spiritually inclined you know and think about it and talk about it you know i mean also i've noticed for myself regardless of whether i do music or or not you know uh well i've noticed a few things first of all um uh first of all that i have to I have to be interested in the moment on something. And it's just, it's kind of a slightly different point of view rather than look at what I have to do because I have a lot on my plate. So rather than look at that, it'll all take care of itself. So I like mm -hmm. right now, I just look at something, what I'm interested in. Like I had a piano lesson this morning. I'm taking a class Monday and Wednesday mornings. So yeah, and I, so good. I'm actually be. practicing good. piano too, you know, like yeah. I'm practicing, you know, and, um, and then, uh, sorry, what else was I going to say? I was going to say, uh, well, I also, yeah. yeah, I also, I listen every day to something spiritual on YouTube, which is usually mm -hmm. Eckhart Tolle or Abraham. And I find that those people make me centered, you know, and centered. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it uh, reminds me of really what I want my life to be like and feel like, you know, um, because it's so easy to get involved with um, or focus, I guess, have your focus go on material things and think that, you know, all of this stuff is is real and what it's about, you know, and it's so not. Got gratitude right there on your wall. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the higher vibrations. So yeah. yeah, I hear you. One of my favorite singers is actually Kurt Elling. And I love that he was tra training to be uh, uh, a priest. Yeah, um, a priest, yeah. Yeah, he was learning theology, so. A lot of his older stuff, I just, I'll break into tears when I listen to some of the stuff he wrote, you know, um, and that, that's powerful stuff because at that time you're really focused on your, your center. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mark is reminding us that, uh, the Beatles also were into meditation. Oh yeah. There's so many more, please. Yeah. yeah. Just happy that I could name seven. <laughs> 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 um, and and the beautiful thing is that um teaching yoga and i'm teaching teachers and half of them are musicians half of them are you know like singer songwriters or i've got i just came from berlin the other day and i met with a student who who uh, is a classical violinist and um uh, and also the whole thing about yoga. I mean, she explained to me, oh yeah, you know, our right arm is internally rotated and the left arm is always externally rotated and the head is like this. And so we have to do yoga to keep ourselves sane, <laughs> you know? And I thought, yeah. And um, I, uh, I've got a few uh, bass players are really tall and then they, they also do yoga to just keep their body uh, vertical stuff like that and you feel great and uh, get into the meditation part of it too and then but it takes some bravery what's my bravery. uh my friend dan said you will probably like what i have created i've created these little stickers yes i saw let the heart have its way yeah i like this one yeah. 
you are headed in the right direction. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> um, art is the tie that unites the planet. Yes. See, all yeah, it yeah. takes is one human. <laughs> Launch rockets of desire. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Did, was that your idea, launch rockets of desire? Actually, I realized that I actually had picked that up from Abraham. <laughs> so, Kathy, go and launch those rockets of desire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, as, as artists, we live on our own islands now. We don't have the money to hire like a lot of, and we, we've got to stay focused on the heart space. Yes, we do. That's good. Art space is so true. I um, don't listen to YouTubes, but I have like a shelf of books. And um, I don't know if you've ever been in a, a bookstore, something draws. Yeah, of course you have, because you talked about the pilot. But you know you, how when you go into a bookstore and all of a sudden your hand goes up and you, you find this and you open it. And it seems that the passage you're just reading was what you needed to hear yes and you get you read until you get to this aha moment make this enough information that makes you just close the book and look and go wow thanks and you can put the book back and save yourself 25 dollars um but i i do that sometimes you know and i have to get back to it that's yeah funny. that's why i got the chief seattle book it's exactly yeah. why yep. you have to tell me today <sighs> Yeah. And Chief Seattle. I, I didn't really know about Chief Seattle, but I've always felt if there is other lifetimes, which I believe there are, that I was Indian before, American Indian. And um, so, and Chief Seattle is really a high level human. I mean, right. extremely gonna... noble. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I wanted to listen some more and um, uh, can I pick anything or should I pick from the what you sent me? I, honestly, I don't remember what I sent you. Maybe. Well, Hey You was what we watched, right? Yeah. There's mm -hmm. Summer Dream, there's Butterfly Original, there's uh, Dan had posted um, the Jazz in Shipper. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's like, that's me about 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, just uh, last guess. You with a big band. Oh, me with a big band. That would be fun. Oh, okay. with the... This, 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 yeah. Every night he sits there and wears a crown With the daring aviator That reminds me of something that I can tell you about, like um, singing with big bands. Um, people don't think about it, but the singer has to have not only the, the lyrics memorized, but yeah. also the arrangement. And no one has the money to to rehearse more than one time through. And the trombone player was always the one that had the, the vocal markings in his score for when I was supposed to come back in. So it's really funny. So while there was like specials and all this other stuff, I, I, I had this agreement with the trombone player, like you nod at me when it's my turn to come back in. So funny, these internal, <laughs> hilarious. Well, here's some things. Um, oh yeah, that is just, that's a, 
that is actually more of like a sales thing. I did an album with Scott Hamilton oh. and this wonderful as a trio. There's no full numbers on there, but um, it's uh, really was really interesting to work with. Yeah, three soloists when normally each of us were playing with um, a, a rhythm section. So it was very interesting to figure out how to keep the rhythm with that. So you're looking for something to play. Uh, what is, is this your acting or something? That was my cabaret show. It was- oh, I, I got to say a little of that. <laughs> Way back when. formed in virtually every field of entertainment. <laughs> As a singer, Lair is well received for her vivacious stage presence and clear melodic tones. Her interpretation and phrasing of American songbook, musical and blues repertoire have earned favorable attention from jazz fans. <laughs> she has entertained audiences in Europe, Asia, and the US, and is equally at ease before an audience of 2,000 as with 30. <laughs> Miss Klein currently lives and works out of Amsterdam. <laughs> she is a welcomed vocalist at many fine theatres, jazz festivals and clubs throughout Europe as a guest singer or with her own band. Leia has loaned her voice and creativity in professional collaborations with intimate guitar and piano trios, improvisational quartets, 17-piece big bands and concert. of course, her one-woman nice. jazz cabaret theatre shows. And you'll be here I'm in a world of pure imagination. Sorry, you're what? Marlena Dietrich's oh. Take a look <laughs> what you see That's what I do. will be your imagination. Say so what? I'm singing that song like this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Traveling in the world of my creation. Okay, what that's you see <laughs> Is that enough that you can stand? <laughs> no, but that that was fun. Yeah. That's what I did on cruise ships. Ah, uh, yeah, right. To uh Holland and then I um uh, translated the the text in between uh, that was really funny yeah who was song. one of your who was one of your kind of uh heroes in performing well i always i love i really actually liked liza minnelli a lot um but i was a big fan of nancy wilson and um, so when I was really like listening to, so I, I grew up with the old musical. So I liked a lot of the people who were singing and acting and all that stuff. But I must say that I never really was 
a blind fan of anyone in particular except Kurt Elling. I'm sorry to say it, but I just <laughs> amazing. Um, probably because I never really cried when I listened to music before I was listening to him. Because of he he knows how to perform. And he's a great lyricist, and um, he just has amazing capacity to sing pop and you know. I mean, I love Mark Murphy, very theatrical, but um, I, uh, I suppose I started off, music came from my grandparents. So I started off with Doris Day and, you know, West Side Story and South Pacific and all these, all these musicals. And then the big discovery was I knew half of them already when I learned that, you know, jazz was actually those songs the Gershwin tunes and the Berlin tunes. Thing. So, yeah, but I think Nancy Wilson definitely um, was an inspiration. And, and yeah, Liza Minnelli, even though she's not really a jazz singer, she was a really great performer. She was. And yeah. I liked how yeah. I liked how Streisand makes a theme out of her, her, her performances and, um, but she was kind of, she was, she may have been one of the best, you know, because her, her, um, her technical ability was out the roof. And then she was creative and dramatic. And um, yeah, she was, she was kind of a mind blower, you know. You could act as well. And then I think I remember, yeah. I think what started my singing was I, I was in LA and I actually, fell off the balcony and I landed on a wrought iron speared fence. That's, that's a big story, blah, blah, blah. So oh, I was dancing and singing and acting at the time when I was in LA in the very beginning. And then I thought, I can't just keep this up. I have to choose. And I chose for singing because I could still move and I could act, you know, like I really like to know what I'm singing about. <laughs> But I love the musical part, the rhythmic part of jazz. So then it's sort of a combination of it. I love to perform and give a, a an atmosphere and make a journey of a show, but I definitely liked to sing because it has some acting and dancing in it, movement in it, you know, although it's not at all dancing. You know, I, I'll, I'll go like this, you know, people are like, oh, you're such a great dancer. And I was like, well, you should have seen me pirouette, do a kick and a throwback. And I can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's all a part of you still. In me. Like if I want to do something, my body just. Yeah. When I look at somebody really quickly, my whole body, looks, it's not just. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't realize how powerful that was till I saw a video of myself. Um, I didn't understand why people were afraid of me sometimes when I would say, you. <laughs> and then I watched myself. I was like, wow, there's a lot of energy in that. <laughs> have, you, <clears throat> have you ever had like a major setback that you've had to come back from? Yeah. Uh, Mm. Interesting. Well, they're usually, I think, going back to being shy. Sometimes I've had setbacks with working with people who then all of a sudden don't want to work with you anymore. And I think that that has really thrown me. And it takes, it took, and that's happened to me three times. And um, I just sort of, it takes me a while to, to come back from that. And um, because I really find music is about collaborating. Um, usually when that particular person decides that they don't wanna work with you anymore because they wanna go off on another project, it's not always a negative thing, but then I, I think honestly, um, then I, it sort of takes the wind out of my sails and then I have to pull back to myself and get remotivated and um yeah so i think yeah that's a very good question yeah that that's the been the biggest set has been myself <laughs> to do something with other people and then really like 
feeling good about it and my time with them is not up but their time with me is up and then I have to sort of um regroup yeah it takes a year or two to regroup you know like your mojo needs to just somehow get recreated what about you well I have to say something similar like um I mean there have been moments in my life that I've either had crushing, you know, life philosophical moments, right? That have knocked me on my ass. And then as quick as possible, which could take a, you know, a few, a minute or could take, <laughs> it could take many minutes to, um, to learn how to pick myself up, you know, and go on. So um, do you um, recommend for people who have to deal with that? Like, do you have? I now? yes, I do. I have Three. what? <clears throat> what I found two things. First of all, you have to be able to confront anything. Like, look, look at it. You have to be able to look at anything, and then the next thing, which is super hard for people to understand and do is take full responsibility for every action that you're involved with, whether it happens to you or you do it. And I think that is really hard to chew for some people. And I came across it through a lot of trial and error, <laughs> trial and error. Yeah. A lot of pain, a lot of, yeah. But once I realized that and I applied that, I was fine. I was always fine. Not that I didn't have issues come up, but. Well, I asked for this, so, and I got it kind of attitude. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, what's been especially hard is um, I've had a, just a few, but a few is enough. Friends who I was super close with, like, I felt like we were siblings and I know they did too, no matter what they said afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And we had fights where they felt that I had done something and they wouldn't talk to me over the phone or live. So we had to do it through emails and it, it worked out really badly. And then I had to I didn't have to, but I decided not to remain friends because I, I didn't, I felt like letting go. It's kind of the same with, you know, divorcing, right? Cause I divorced my first husband. So you have to, you have to let go and deal with that loss. And then you move on and life becomes better, you know? Um, and I definitely took responsibility for my shit too, you know? Yeah. So like you, we, we do attract the things that um, we're supposed to learn something from. And then yes. you, you keep attracting it until you learn your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Ow. Oh, wait a minute. This actually hurts. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I mean, uh, you know who I also like is Jill Scott. Jill oh Scott. yeah, yeah. Doing this song about what? Um, actually, I hope I'm not offending Diane Reeves. If it might have been her as well, I, I love both of them. And yeah. um, she talks about um, walking and then falling into a hole, and then having to get up and move on, and then falling into the hole again, and then walking around. Finally, walking around the hole the next time. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's learning your lesson. You know, that, that hole is just a hole. It's, it's it's there. It's been there. It's supposed to be there. That used to happen with me with my relationships. Mm -hmm. I would date basically the same kind of guy a few times, but kind of colored differently. But still, it's it was the same issue. And then finally, I went, oh, it's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, like, oh, OK, I'm not going to do that again. And then I'd move on to the next. And finally, I ended up with a really good guy. But, you know, but it took me 
years. I think I met Gary when I was like 46, you know, and so. Gary's a good Yeah, guy. yeah. <laughs> I can relate, yeah. But it's also, it's difficult, the number two, what you said, like really taking full responsibility. And it's really easy um, to, to want to blame it on someone else because it's just so painful. I remember yeah. Frank, Frank and I were on our way to uh, California and we, we had oodles of time and uh, evidently Delta had a bus going to the airplane instead of, uh, what do you call it? The, um, instead of a direct connection to the airport. Yeah. So bus, you have to be there half an hour before because the bus is taking you. So we were just having breakfast and and I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to the bathroom and then we'll do some shopping. And then I looked at the time and it was like 20 minutes before departure. So we wrap ourselves up and we run there. And of course we missed the bus, we missed the plane. We have to, to take the next plane. And I said, I'm so mad. I want to blame it on you. I want to blame it on you, but I did it myself. <laughs> like, say, I really want to blame it on you. <laughs> 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 you distracted me you know <laughs> like that to anything you know so funny yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah well we i i mean i i do always say you know how glad i am how lucky i feel like that that i have music to teach me lessons in life you know so all of these lessons most of them are within the music structure, you know, of life, of living. And so great. <laughs> it's great because I can I can be creative while I'm <laughs> while I'm getting the ass my ass kicked. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> um, Fons Elsenberg said oh, hey Fons. Hello. He loves to see you and listen to you. Oh. You. And uh, Mark wants to know how you feel about working with technology, doing recording projects where musicians are recording in different locations. Have you gotten into that? Um, no, I was asked to do something like that, but um, I haven't done that yet. So that's yet one other new medium that I have to conquer. <laughs> I, I, I was just away for a whole month um, on, on a little retreat for myself. And in that empty space we talked about, I started to record, um, I took my, my uh, Rode microphone with me and I started to record just sounds. You know, just uh, sounds. And then I sent those sounds to another musician and he's busy adding his things. Wow. So in some ways, I guess that's- uh, Yeah beginning of a possible project yeah that's interesting like sounds <clears throat> yeah there's a there's a lot of stuff like that going on um steven nakmanovich has been doing um for the last two or three years i guess he lives in like virginia somewhere and uh with a lot of woods behind his house where he walks and he's he's actually taken birds and recorded with them it's really quite beautiful because he does uh, improvisational violin. Oh wow! So, yeah, it's really there's a there's a, a horn player. Paul Horn is his name. I wonder yeah. if that's his real name. And he does great stuff. And I actually use a lot of his stuff. Um, I've used it in in meditations or in yoga classes. And you're I talking about the old the older Paul Horn, right? Yeah, but now yeah. he went to the Taj Mahal and made sounds and yeah yeah he's he done that before did like soundscapes in various locations like for a minute or two and I love them I love them but his older work is is jazz music with form and composition and stuff like that so yeah but he also used to do like whale music and he's yeah. done a lot yeah he's done a lot of natural music for years but he also does um he's very active right now and he's doing a lot of uh a lot of live projects and um in fact i contribute to him through patreon you know and um yeah 
I think maybe that might be where I'm heading right now, that it would be nice to just in an empty space without worrying about a key. Yeah. Or, a, you know, like a modality to just make noise, you know, like make sounds and then give them to somebody to see what they would do with it or layer sounds over each other. There's this one woman who has like a, a loop, an eight, an eight loop, you know, where you can sing and, oh. and then she adds uh, other sounds over top. Yeah. And yeah. adds, uh, you know, ambiance and stuff like that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. There's also a lot of like, um, well, I have a group uh, you know, fish to birds, it's seven piece <clears throat> improv group, vocal improv. So we just start, oh. like if I started, ba, 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 and then what would you do? Yeah. Yeah. So we do that, but there's actually a lot of groups all over the planet who are doing that kind of stuff. And they call it circle singing, but it's not necessarily, you don't have to, you know, do it with form, although there are forms to make it a little more, you know, come out a little more structured, you know, sounding. But um, yeah, there's, and of course, Jay Clayton, people like that, she's, she's done loops for a long, long time. She's, when she travels on the road, she brings her looper and she's worked with it so much that it's very comfortable for her. Um, I've, I've wanted to, wanted to, wanted to, wanted to, but I haven't yet purchased one yet. I'm a little bit always scared of purchasing new technology and freedom. Like, no. You can get simple ones. I got a simple one actually for like 75 bucks. Oh yeah. That's yeah, simple. and it's pretty simple. Um, so, and it's, it's fun, but if, do you use GarageBand or Logic or anything like that? No, I just GarageBand. You can do it in GarageBand too. Yeah, that's great. And, and my really, really expensive microphone fits in there. So that's fine. And then it just to figure out how to add the, yeah, I need to, that's what you need people for. Like, please, I'm an idiot. Can you help me? Luckily, there's a lot of people who will help. <laughs> and you have to ask for help. That was my th lesson from last this last year. Exactly. Well, Leia Klein, it's been two hours. How is that possible? I don't know. That we would go into a deep silence at a certain point. But, but I've missed you so much, and I love talking to you. I love you. And oh. uh, I'd like to talk again soon. Yeah, let's and not in front of everybody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so we can tell our secrets. Our secrets. <laughs> so let's close with a harmonious uh, sound. Okay. You start, I'll finish. I'll well, I, I'll just, I mean, uh, without rhythm is always best in these a kind of long I don't know if everybody can hear us both. <laughs> Sound great. Okay. Yeah. It's really a really pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's really great to talk to you. A You're human welcome. being. I know it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And um, tips. I will just say who's on Thursday through Sunday because I have the archives. And so Thursday is John Prue, piano player, singer, composer. Mm -hmm. uh, Friday is Great singer from Seattle, Greta Matassa. Mm -hmm. Saturday is a great uh, jazz soul singer, really good and a great business person and painter and teacher, Kathy Cousins. And Sunday is one of my favorite guitar players who's also become a singer songwriter, Anthony Wilson. Anthony you know him? Wilson. He's Gerald Wilson's son. Do you remember him? But no, I haven't met Anthony Wilson. He's so good. Have Plus, to come he's out really, there. We'll hang. He's fun to talk to, like, um, you know, kind of spiritually inclined. Inclined. Surprise, surprise. I don't know what kind of word that was. Inclinated. I'm sure that's not a word. The English language but, is fantastic like that, yeah. <laughs> also, Saturday, Leia, if you're in town Saturday, if you're in LA, come hang out at my gig at the conference room at Playa Vista. It's indoors though, so you have to be comfortable coming indoors. 
It's with a trio and I sing first and then you can jam with us. Yeah. Are you doing a hybrid? Are you putting a video on? No. Or it's just live? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just live. Get on down there and somebody take my place. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's been lovely. I love you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Till the next time. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. I hope you guys enjoyed our conversation. <laughs> Bye. Bye.